Hey everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this episode, I'd like to start talking about some common patterns I found really useful when building iOS applications. And one of them is a retry load screen. So quite often when you have a view control that leads to load data, make an asynchronous call and then handle a retry or failure event, uh, there's a really elegant way you can do that by basically creating a retry screen, giving the ability to load data behind the scenes and then ultimately display your results when everything comes back. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you how this pattern works and why it's so handy. Before we take a look at a solution, let's just go over the challenge we're trying to solve here. Here we have a typical view controller that we simply want to fetch some data asynchronously out there on the web. Now while we're doing that, there's two really nice affordances that would be really great to add. One is some kind of loading screen or some kind of loading event that lets the user know that we're fetching their data. And then secondly, if that data load fails for some reason in the event of a network error or they go into a tunnel and they lose connectivity, it'd be nice to give them the option to retry or refresh. And then depending upon whether they have success or fail, actually ultimately update our view controller and go on. The challenge is how do we do this elegantly? How do we do this without having to continuously recreate, do this over and over again, and set up one nice standard way of doing this throughout our application? And one way of doing it is with this loading retry failure uh, view controller method. Here we basically create a full screen lock controller, which is gonna contain two states, loading and fail. Loading is what we display when we're loading and making the call. Failing is the one that we display when we failed and we ultimately want to give them a retry. What we can do in our view controller is when we have a function called load data, and this is the thing that's going to go out there and fetch the data, we can set the state on our various view controllers to display different ones under different conditions. So for example, when we start loading the data, we can set our view to load data and that'll display the loading screen. Then when we make our asynchronous call and we do our fetch, we can say we're done loading, so there's no need to display that anymore. And then depending upon whether we have success or failure, load the data. In this case, we're gonna update a table view controller and present, or we can display the failure case in the event we get a network error and give them a means of a retry to refresh the data after. Now the example I'm using here, we're gonna have a, just a blue button that says retry on it. They're gonna be able to click on that and that's gonna communicate back to us via the responder chain and ultimately give us the means of letting us kick off this process again. So with that overview, let's now jump into the code. So what we have here is our standard view controller. This is a plain old view controller, which has a table view in it, which we're gonna populate with some data after we do the fetch. And what you can see here is this is where we're extending our full screen lock controller. This is the thing that contains two view controllers, our loading and retry view controller. And these are the two that we're gonna swap depending upon the state we're in when we make our asynchronous network call. Now what these things do is they basically, this itself is a view controller. It contains two other view controllers, which it adds as children to itself. So a little bit of the magic happens down here. Here basically when we go add locking view for each of these, we're gonna add our retry and our loading view controller. What this does is it adds it as a child to this view controller. And these are the three methods you need to call, add child, add subview, and did move. That hooks up all the life cycle eventing around the view controller. And then ultimately here, we are just laying it out, painting it to the four corners. So that's how we set up our two view controllers here and then it's these methods, set to retry, set to loading, did finish loading, that swap out the appropriate view controller, set their alpha to be either zero or one, kind of fading them in or fading them out, and that's how we can really control what gets displayed. So now let's go back to our view controller and see how we actually use this. Now what I've got here is a fetch button at the very top, which is gonna kick off a process to actually fetch our data. So the button, uh, fetch button tapped here is gonna call load data. In this case, I've set it up to show you what a failure looks like so we can see the retry screen. And then ultimately also the loading screen. Now just to show you what happens, when we click that fetch button, we're gonna call load data failure here. 
and that is going to call this method, where are you, right here. And first I want to show you what it looks like just to set that to loading. So I'm going to kick off this process. I'm going to click fetch and you're going to see it sets it in this loading state. So this is what the user will see if you have a really big fetch, it's taking a long time, a slow internet connection. At least here they'll see something that says, hey, we're loading the screen, everything's okay. Now if we comment in after we've set the load and actually go ahead and do the fetch, this is a fetch that's purposely going to fail. But I just want you to see how the mechanics of it work. This fetch data, first of all, all it's doing is it's actually going to simulate going out there, getting some data from the internet, and then returning either success or fail via a swift result, which is going to be array of strings or an error. In this case, we're going to just force it to, I'm not even going to look at the result, I'm going to force it into the failed or the retry state. And I just want to show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to build this again. This time when I hit fetch, the retry screen is going to go very quick. Sorry, the loading screen is going to go very quick. You'll see the retry. And now this is simulating, okay, we failed. We've got a poor internet connection. We've got a 500 from the back end. And this is our retry state. Now let's take a look at this retry button here. What's going on here? This retry is actually a protocol that we set up called failable view. And we're going to fire this thing uh, when we click it, and it's going to fire up the via the responder chain back up to our parent view controller. So if, you, if you'd like a refresher on responder chains, click the link above. You can see that there. But just to quickly show you how this works again, this is a protocol we define here on our retry view controller. And it gets fired here via the target action. This is what initiates the responder chain. So note this target action has a nil here. That's what configures it to use the responder chain and fire it up through all the views that are that it's associated with, ultimately coming back up to our parent view controller. And here's the selector. It's our protocol retry sender. So in order to intercept this call, all we need is to create a method of this signature that can handle it. And that's what our view controller does. Basically down here, we have an extension on our view controller for the failable view protocol. And by defining our retry there, we can intercept it and ultimately reload the data. So when we hit retry here, that's going to call this load data. This load data, of course, does something successful. It goes through the same mechanics of setting the loading screen, downloading, but it's going to get some result, in this case, some games, load them in our table view, and voila, ultimately display them here. So what are some of the pros for setting this up in your application? Well, for one, it's a really nice affordance. You're giving your user some really nice feedback here, some really robust error handling, and you're never leaving them in the lurch, not knowing whether or not they've connected, whether they can refresh, and you're giving them the ability to retry. And it's a nice, simple, reusable, consistent way to set this up for all your view controllers in your code. Cons, well, I mean, you don't get something for nothing. It is a little more complicated. You do have to add a little bit more work. But I think this is a really nice, uh, elegant way of handling this. You can set this up for your parent view controllers whenever they need to do a data refresh and uh, set up some kind of waiting screen or retry screen. And I really think it's worth the effort, which is why uh, I think it's nice just to have a simple example like this. Of course, you can make it look a lot better than I have, but it's a nice, elegant way of just setting up this infrastructure so you can reuse it throughout your application. Okay, well, that's it for this week in Swift Arcade. I hope you found that useful. Do drop me a line or a comment, and of course, um, leave a suggestion for some other videos that you'd like to see. All right, take care, everyone. Stay safe. We'll see you. Bye-bye.